This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust out your eyes. Wait, hold on. Turn that mic down for a second. All right, yeah, Jamie, what's up, man? What doing, up, baby? Man? How you doing, man? You ain't man? got the ass to sway. <laughs> oh. You wait. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I'll be hearing y'all, man. This you is be amazing. This? You a citizen of sway in the morning, dude? <laughs> What the hell is you talking about, man? I don't know. Dog. You're a legend, baby. You're a legend. Yeah. Oh, come on, dope. man. Don't, don't no, 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 no. no. But, but think about it, though. How many years, though? Mm. And, and you, still, yeah, and you yeah, started yeah. when you was 12. Yeah, good point. Because you, you look, me, 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 me and uh, 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 me and Funk Flex was talking about getting older. We was like, yeah, you ain't going to get that. You got to get that colored up. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? got to stay young. You know what I'm saying? Get all this dyed up. Yeah. Funk How Flex looking years, good man? too, man. Flex is good. He Flex look good. My calorie game is mean. Yeah. Is yeah. that what he be saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we came on the radio in 1991 when we was on the beat in L.A. No, no, no. Not Great. the beat. We came in uh -oh. in San Francisco. And then we went to the beat in L.A. Came in How first. crazy is that? That's ridiculous. 91. 91. I remember that. I remember I had on some Z Cavariches at that time. <laughs> Damn. What is that? What are these jeans? Jeans. Yeah, it's crazy. I had 91. the Jabro. Remember the, the Jabro? Jabro. Jabro. Oh, like I, had the eight, at the I had the eight ball leather jacket. Damn. Carl Kanai. The cross yeah. colors, cross colors. Yeah, Carl Kanai made me feel like I was graduated from Carl Kanai. Yeah, you it's feel crazy. more sophisticated. You yeah. made a little money. Uh, and I remember <laughs> seeing Jamie first time I saw yeah. you live. You were in Sacramento. Sac. You were in Sacramento, and I had no idea yeah. that you was uh, musically inclined. So yeah. I went to see you tell jokes. Yeah, and I'm like, damn, this motherfucker can yeah, sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, and that was always tough though, too, though, because coming like from a living color and shit yeah. like that, it was like. Nobody believed that. Nobody could like niggas. Uh, I can't. I, I keep laughing at this dude. Yeah. Right. And I remember I, trying to get my music off. I remember at that time, I'm doing this character Wanda on the Living Color. Hey, for real though, right? That's how this favorite character. <laughs> right. 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 Hey, for real though, right? I rock and, your work. I, and I'm doing the show, but we. I'm not known yet. I just started. So like maybe two shows in, I'm yeah. doing the character. But Teddy Riley and Guy come to the show, and I'm like, snap! I I, I, I grab my cassette tape. Right, because I've been working on my demo. <laughs> he got to turn the wheel. Yeah, so, but I'm dressed as Wanda. Wow. <laughs> and Teddy Riley leaving, so I'm like running down the hall, yo, Ted! This nigga turn around and see Teddy's in size 21 pumps and shit. It's like, what the fuck? And I said, yo, yo, Ted, yeah, yo, man, I want you to check my music out. I do music. He goes, impossible. Mm. He said, wow. impossible. That nigga said, impossible. Because at that time, you know, I mean, come on, it yeah, was yeah. huge. He said, nah, nigga, impossible. That's and I was like, oh, snap, I'll never be able to. And then it wasn't until. Years later, uh -huh. like years later, your, your boy, our boy. Yeah, uh, I'm throwing a party. I do these parties called on my balcony. You, you know, you've been there where oh everybody comes gosh. to the, come come to the party. Yeah. mostly musically inclined, and I wanted to be a music, so I put a, a studio in my house. Mm -hmm. So I would invite all music people and throw a bash for them. Snoop, Puff, everybody yeah. call it on my balcony. But I'm trying to get 16 bars. Let them go in. It, let, you know what I'm saying? That's a little secret number. You know what I'm saying? I'm, serious, I'm like, yo, yo, son, Snoop, let's just lay down something for me so I can get on it or whatever like that. And then one day, throwing this party, and all of a sudden this dude walk in with a backpack, jaw a little swollen. Mm -hmm. Kanye. Kanye. Ooh. And that's Yeah. A yeah. Yeah, and Breon and Breon yeah. brought him to the crib. Yeah, and I said, "Who was that?" They said, "What's well, Kanye? What do you do?" And he said, "He produces for Jay Z, and he' about to be the next thing." I said, "Well, whatever he is, he got to perform here at the house because everybody has to perform." Mm. Uh -huh. So Kanye <laughs> did something with the acapella. I was like, "This nigga is incredible, yeah, right?" Yeah. And then he said, "Uh, yeah, uh, I have a song. Uh, I want you to get on." I was like, "Nigga, what? I got the studio <laughs> in the back." Word. So we go in the back. And he said a song go, she say she wants some Marvin Gaye, wow. some Luther Vandross. I said, I got it. I got it. She say she wants some Marvin. He said, what you doing? I said, well, you don't know nothing about R&B. So I got to put the R&B shit on the scene. <laughs> and this one we learned about, this one we learned about Kanye. He said, uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm Jamie Foxx. He said, yeah, but don't do that. He said, just do the song like, like this. So I did the song. And in my mind, I'm like, this shit is whack. Uh -huh. He's not going to make it. Right? And then I left. I did a, <laughs> I did, I left. I did a bad movie. It came back. <laughs> and when I came back from that, I said, "Yeah, remember that song you was fronting on? It's number one in the country." In the mm. country. And so that's how I, that's how I actually got into the music job. Wow. And that's how you got that acclamation, yeah. Right? And, and that was because at, at that time it was long enough for people who knew me back at the, at the in Living Color Day had mm. gotten older, and the young folks saw me, and they was like, "Oh, that's the dude with Kanye West," mm -hmm. you know. So that's how I jumped into the music.
Wow. Crazy. I didn't even realize stories, that. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story, man, stories. Story. So let's just tell story. Let me tell you, give you another story. I, you know how you, this is how I was tracking music so hard. Remember when Puff was like super huge in music? Like yeah. Puff would walk into a club and girls would literally tell their man, listen, I'm gonna, Puff is here. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and go. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and go. He's here. And, and he would just leave with everybody like, and all the girls. <laughs> and when Puff would show up at the club, we couldn't even get in the club if we was in LA because he'd just take over everything, right? So I started carrying a camera. To get into the parties, uh-huh. so oh, I had no I'm serious. Entourage. And it wasn't like the little, you know, the little. Uh-huh. You know, no, it was the big fucking cannon the with TMZ. the light and shit and the fucking. And I said, I popped out of the uh, uh, the sedan. I was riding a sedan, <laughs> following Puff's like party. I popped out just about to go into the club. I said, Puff, can I can I document? He's like, What? I said, Can I document? Yo, we we gotta get this. You fans, right? This shit is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, Playboy, yeah, but come on, go on in the Playboy. I'm scared. Oh. Come on, yeah. Puff, recreate that. I just, I, my battery went down. And so <laughs> I'm filming all this shit, right? And I remember being, I got Puff at a, I got Puff at this party in Philly, and he said he spent a million and a half dollars. On the party? I said, you spent, what, nigga? You spent a million and a half dollars on the party? He said, yeah, Playboy. You said, and it was fly. It was incredible. Uh-huh. And I told him, I'll throw you a party in LA for $400. That'll rival this party. And he was like, you out of your fucking mind. I said, I'm telling you. I said, because I throw parties in L.A. So anyway, he comes to L.A. And this is how, this is how the, the On My Balcony shit started. He comes to L.A. on a Saturday. And he says, make it happen. Like 8 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Get in my phones. We get 200 people in my small house. That's the dopest people in L.A. Uh, when he gets there, I said, look at the layup. He said, well, that's the girl from this. And that's the girl. From-. I said, yeah, yeah. We all work mm-hmm. out here. So it was incredible, right? Mm-hmm. I said, but look at the spread. I got Kentucky Fried Chicken over there. I just put it, <laughs> I just put it in the plates right there. I got cola. I, said, I just got Coca-Cola, and it was cool. $400 max. At that party was amazing yeah. because Puff was the man, and, and this was out. And niggas from L.A. was really hating, like, nigga, I hate this shit, but fuck. Oh, nigga, that's your you gotta isolate the shoulder. Oh, that's right. Nigga, I'm telling you. So so the party is the party is crazy. Yeah. Puff is there. Missy Elliott. Whoa. Missy got a room. Puff got a room. It's crazy. Guy standing next to the wall with a green jumpsuit, like a drink jump jacket on, whatever. Nobody knew who he was. Who was it? Oh gosh. Who was it? Jay-Z. <laughs> Nobody knew who he was. This is when before Jay-Z popped. That's right. So the yeah. party is blazing. We singing karaoke. It's crazy. I go to my garage. I go to my garage. There's a little dude and a tall dude. The little dude say, yo, B, it's like this all the time. Like girls and shit like this. It's crazy. This is nuts. I say, yeah, man, it's crazy. Who are you? Oh, we the Neptunes. Wow. Damn. I said, what's your name? So my name is Pharrell. I said, yeah, man, I heard of y'all. I mean, y'all shit is going to be hot. It was that type of party. So we've been doing these parties. That was like. 2000, oh, yeah. and that's how that's how I started getting into the to the music joint, and then throwing that, that, that parties was before for everybody. 2000, though. Was it? That was before 2000. No, it wasn't. You don't think so? It was. What, what, when Jay, was that Jay, song Jay, out? Jay, when was that, that song out? That song was out. Hard Knock Life Volume Two was when he popped, so it was like that same time. Oh, okay. All right. That was around the same time. Okay. Because but what, I, what, but what, what song? Your, what year was that song out? Dun, 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 dun. We like, ain't going nowhere. 99? 99. 99. Okay, yeah. So, so it was okay, just it was just bubble. before Jay Z bubbled. On the cusp. He was on because you gotta think LA, you know, we get it slow. Right. See, we knew I'm oh, thinking hip because hip hop, right. we yeah. knew Jay Z. Yeah, you knew Jay Z. Yeah. But, but LA, yeah. you know, LA, we yeah. still playing boys and men. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and the top song is <laughs> boys and you know, we don't they was, <laughs> yeah. you know, LA wow, just moved crazy. Yo, Yo, the party so I started doing parties like that. And then finally it escalated. I got a bigger house. Yay. And and one party I did for for for, for Drake, mm-hmm. two thousand five hundred people counted into the party. What? Twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred people counted at your house. Into, at the house. Do you have security two, at your of house? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, and it was like at three in the afternoon, like fifty girls showed up in a, in a van mm-hmm. and said, "We here for the party." I said, "Well, you know, Drake don't get to eleven. This is when he fir- his first album." Yeah. She said, "We'll wait." And then by the time he got there, I remember Drake getting out the car. Clothes too big because you know he just got the new clothes. Yeah. <laughs> he had like the, the Letterman's jacket. And he was just like he was, you know, he was young, he was skinny, in it. Him and his boy, and I had a driving movie poster, a, 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 a movie poster picture of his artwork uh-huh. at the house, like like literally 15, 20 feet tall. He's like, wow. oh, I said, man, we want to toast you. Want to we want to make sure you understand that you're gonna receive a lot of hate. So before you get all that, <laughs> right. we gonna let you get, we gonna let you you gonna get. So he goes in the back, two thousand five hundred people. It was crazy. He goes on the on the balcony. 
I do an interview and I say, yo, Drake, just do something for us. Like, you know, say something to the people. And he said, ah, oh, oh, man, ah, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I said, I said, just say nothing. So he leans over the balcony and says, I'm more than just an option. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Refuse it. Man, the whole place went up in smoke. We partied to like six in the morning. Four o'clock, I had a guy come and play his music unplugged on the piano. So everybody sort of rapped over and we do this thing called New Music Hour and you'll be hearing about this more too. New, we call it New Artist Hour. Uh -huh. We're at my house for an hour. All the new artists who's trying to get on can perform. No one's allowed to boo. No uh -huh. one's allowed to like, you know, mm. talk shit and everybody does their thing. The last time we did it, Chris Brown, who was having a, a situation where he couldn't go out. He was like too crazy. Mm -hmm. So he always comes to the crib. I said, you can come here, turn your camera phones off. So I think it was him, Tiger, all these other cats in the crib. And the last time we did it, he plays his new album. And so people started performing, right? This one dude said, yo, Fox, I, I don't sing, but I got something for Chris. And he played this song called We Gonna Run, we Gonna Run Some Red Lights. And it was dope, and, and Chris ended up cutting it. So that's the type Just of like wow. that. That's the environment. All the time. Yeah, that's the environment. Oh, that's yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, you got to come. You got to come. Yeah, man. You got to come. It's crazy. I, I went to... Cause you used to, we used to live around the corner from each other yeah. in Tarzana. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah, man, and, damn. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Ooh, and I'm glad it was no camera phones. And, <laughs> man, the, the house in Tarzana. I, yeah. I just walked around the corner and said, "Let me, let me sneak in. I could get in." <laughs> Come and on, I man. And I went in that and um, man, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was classic. It was, I, yeah, it was, because the thing about it, the environment was, it was so many people there, big names that yeah. was so relaxed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They were just themselves, and right. it was like, yeah. yo, I wish I could see more dudes be able to relax. Yeah, like, 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 like the one party we had a Christmas party. We always do a Christmas party every year on December twenty third. We always do our annual Christmas party, and we do that for people who can't get back to their homes yeah. like in LA we, we started like maybe 20 years ago like ain't no man we can't get back to the crib yeah. so we throw the Christmas party so the one Christmas party it was I think it was like 2005 it was the the the, the later room Salma Hayek over here wow. Eddie Murphy over here Snoop and Game and everybody in between just having a party. And I remember, oh, man, I remember this. Suge showed up. It was crazy. And this was when the Suge, it was the real Suge. It wasn't, no, it wasn't like now how you see Suge. You'd be like, oh. In a wheelchair, you know? right. You know what I'm saying? It was like the real Suge showed up. And I was like, snap, that's too much pressure on me. Because how the fuck do I tell Suge he can't come into the no fucking boss. party? I'm not kidding you. And, 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 my, and the, guy, the guys that I do have is security, they, they real guys. Yeah. Right? And they say, yo, Fox, uh, Suge's outside. I said, shit, I lost 30 pounds. I said, <laughs> <clears throat> I say he can't. We can't. We can't right now because it would be it would be crazy. I don't want to sell my Hayek to catch a bottle or something in the head or something, right? So I remember saying, I remember having to go tell people at the party, just watch your neck, cause <laughs> my man outside down there by that Chevron. By the, yeah, okay. You know the Chevron. And it was that's a that's a vantage point. It's yeah. like you know that's a coup de top. You can't get past. Yeah. You got to go past the Chevron. So I remember telling Game, <laughs> Shug's outside, and he's like. <laughs> One fear, no fear though. Uh huh. Mm. He was like, "All right, I right, bet, you know, <laughs> okay." And then I told, and I see Snoop dancing with like four girls, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I said, "Snoop, nigga, I don't want to alarm you, but uh, Shug's outside, and he does this. You ain't gonna let him in, is you?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Cool. <laughs> and, and you know, so it was like that. So it was, so it was incredible moments, but danger at the same time, which was great. You know, that was <laughs> Get Jamie, Jamie Fox. <laughs> it's true. Yo. Jamie got a new album called Hollywood. Oh, that's right. That's coming out May 18th. That's right. You talked about how you first met Chris Brown, and mm -hmm. you got a song called "You Changed Me" with Chris yeah. Brown that is really moving up the charts because yeah. you put out. Two other songs that just it's whack. They, well, well, they weren't. They, <laughs> they didn't. They, okay, it's my fault. What, 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 one of them was it's my fault. Yeah, okay. It's it's just going it wasn't it's the best whack. represent. Okay, we want to move forward. It's whack. I mean, okay. You know what? It's like this. You got to stay real with yourself. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes you say, "Hey," I say, "Yeah, y'all could try that." Cause see, I'm an executioner. I don't, I don't get in the way of the, of the music. I let yeah. my, I let the music people handle it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Cause I remember like talking to Breon, like I'm like I remember Breon. Breon always finds the right records. He found Slow Jams. He found Gold Digger. He found the Gold Digger moment was amazing. Oh, that was oh, incredible. Wow. But the Gold Digger moment was amazing because yeah. Breon calls me like three in the morning. Get your ass up, nigga. Get up. Get up. You want to be in the music business? Get your ass up. Get your <laughs> ass up. Get your ass up. He say everything three times. <laughs> so he said Kanye working on this track, 
and uh, it's crazy. Get down. So I get up four in the morning, drive down there, and I walk in the studio, and you hear thunk, 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 thunk. Thunk, 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 thunk. They working on. Uh-huh. I ain't saying she a goat. I'm like, oh shit. I'm like this. And he's like, Nick, what are you doing? I said, Nick, it's hot. Uh-uh. <laughs> you ain't on the track yet. Uh-huh. So he just go over and press stop. Everybody was like, what happened here? That shit is whack. It's Brian. That shit is whack. That shit is whack. It's whack. Unless you put my man on it. My man got to get on. Going in there, Fox. <laughs> going in the booth. I'm like, what the fuck? So I go in the booth and he's and Brian takes over the session. And they, and I said, okay, we're running back. Uh, and then run back, run back. And then all of a sudden, she take my mother. Well, I'm in league. Dead. And that's what it was. Wow. And sent? Uh huh. Oh, she's a gold digger. Oh, I am a town. That digs on me. Yeah. And that's how it happened. Man. And that's how it happened. Damn. You know, Jenny yeah. Fox is here. <laughs> I want to know put up the phone lines. And that was right. What's that? After you won the Oscar, right? After the Oscar, so Oscar it was a little bit of foray, heat. right? Yeah, yeah. So the heat, the heat was, the heat was on the Ray thing, and then I think, I think that was one of his most brilliant songs that, that Ye did. Yeah, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. to this day, when you sing that in, everywhere, they they go crazy for that. But uh, yeah, but I, I don't ever get in the way of the music. Yeah. So like, cause I tried one time, cause I thought I had a song that was hot, uh-huh. and I, we had an argument, and I and I think I was in the in the in the studio with Timberland. I said, man, you know, Breon, hey. This, this is real artist to artist. Mm-hmm. No, no fucking, you know, record people. I, mean, I want you to hear this song because I think this is, you know, Jamie Foxx is best. And I'm talking in third person. <laughs> and I played it for Timberland. He stopped it 15 seconds. Oh, that shit is old. Mm. You, you saying if you want to, you if you want to, shit, you're going to be in Pachanga. You're going to be at the casinos. That's what you're going to be. You're going to be at Pachanga. <laughs> I said, you don't think it had the, the essence in it? I don't give a fuck about no essence. Man. These people ain't gonna listen to that shit. These young people, let me show you something. He played me something. I was like, oh shit, yeah. So I know how to step back and just let, let them do the music. music. But when it is whack, I say, hey, it's whack. You know, okay, it's no, it's, okay. I'm not, I'm not pressed to to try to fake it. You know, uh-huh. it was it was whack. But I think with this one, with Chris Brown, and everything, I think this is the essence of what the real album is about. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think you'll see now it'll progress from that. You know, uh, you know, and, and get better. You changed me, Jamie Foxx. Sway in the morning. Sway in the morning. You changed me, Jamie Foxx. Sound good. We're, talk, we're talking about we're talking about we're talking about Chris Brown, young yeah. Chris Brown. I meet him. At, he's 15 years old, throwing another party in Miami. Eddie Murphy, Colin, Colin, Colin Farrell. Everybody's in the building. We're having a great time. OJ came to that party. What? OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson walked in the motherfucking party, and it was crazy because that was when it was still like sort of like fresh, and yeah. people like, oh, it was a little bit <laughs> The niggas was dancing. Oh, nigga, what? The fuck? You know, because you, you see him on TV and you say, oh, this thing is really right here. <laughs> Especially white people. They was like, oh, oh my God, yeah. what kind of party is that? <laughs> and all the comedians rushed to the to the DJ booth to try to get the joke off. So I grabbed him like, oh shit, we got OJ in the house. It's a killer party now, right? <laughs> so everybody's like, oh, snaps. Talk about jokes, yeah, right? right yeah. That motherfucker snuck him in the DJ booth, though. Mm-mm. And said, yo, I heard him joke. I said, oh, man, yo, what's up? Lord? Let me see your hands, <laughs> right? Uh, but I saw young Chris Brown. In the audience dancing. And uh, I said, who is that in there? Who's these dudes and just dancing? They was just mm-hmm. doing the new whatever that shit was. Whatever that fucking shit was. So I called myself, gonna call him out. So I'll go down, you know, get out of VIP. And I said, yo, what's up? I tried to like challenge him as a dance. He just did a flip. I said, okay, yeah, so. Game over. Was it right? Yeah, it was over. But uh, I've known this dude since he was 15. You, we were talking off the air about how, how talented he is and what he had to go through. I've talked to him whenever it's good and indifferent. Yeah. Uh, he comes to the crib. Sometimes people don't get a chance to see the Chris Brown I see. He comes to the crib, dances with my sister who has Down syndrome for hours. Mm. Just a different person. And uh, so it made sense on this record because when we were doing Jimmy Kimmel, he walks mm-hmm. in with his daughter. And I said, there you go. I wow. said, not now. Yeah. Look at you now. You get it, right? And he was like this. And his daughter was like this. like mm-hmm. Just like, and I hope you don't mind me, me telling that story, but... You just see something over him. I said, now, now you, now you get to re- press the reset button mm-hmm. and really do something in- incredible. Because the way he was holding his daughter, I said, man, now that's everybody don't need to see it because you don't mm-hmm. need to promote it. But I'm telling you right now, that's a whole different thing. So on that track, it's not about you know his daughter or anything like that on this track. But it just, it's just interesting that yeah. the, that the dynamic is you know you changed. Me. You, 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 you have always put your daughter. 
yeah. up front too. Mm-hmm. You've done yeah. that too. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, like it, bring it to yeah. the award shows and all of that. You got to because yeah. you know, like in our business, man, and I don't know who all got kids or whatever like mm-hmm. that, but sometimes our business will take us away from our kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when I was doing this movie with Oliver Stone, he said, "Don't do that. Take your kids with you." And mm-hmm. that's when my daughter was really young because I was. I said, "Okay, cool." So I started taking my daughters with me everywhere I go so they can experience, it. especially my little one, my mm-hmm. my six year old. She just. Everywhere, like when she went to the Grammys, she was like she was at a safari. She was yeah. just trying to get pictures with everybody. She got pictures with Jay. She got pictures with Katy Perry. Madonna was incredible. She yeah. loved Madonna. She was like, "Oh, I love her, Dad." I said, "Really? I, I love." Her. I said, "Well, let's go meet Madonna." She said, "Your performance was the best performance." You know what Madonna said? Good taste. That's to your <laughs> yeah, daughter. Like, yeah, 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 that was a classic Madonna Madonna answer, <laughs> yeah, right? Right. But uh, yeah, I always bring my kids with me, man, and, and just let them experience it. Um, I was saying this way before you got here. To me, you telling everybody else's story, but I find it curious that it sounds like your music didn't translate during the Jamie Foxx show. Like, not and at I all. And I loved it. I kept thinking, when is he gonna put out an album? Not at all. I, how come? I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. How come it didn't translate? You think in the show? Because I, I was too I was too funny. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes when you got that persona of being mm-hmm. funny, mm. it's hard to get out of that. So people are listening, but they ain't really understanding what it is. But then when you actually, like Brian was like this, he said, look, bro, you don't have to joke it out all the time. He says, let mm. me go find you real records that other artists will perform. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like that's what's going to give you real credibility mm-hmm. because you have to sort of overstep you know so when you found so when he found like blame it on the alcohol oh. he says you got to do this record exactly like this record and don't do it like you know you would do it mm-hmm. and so when you have the 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 hit record that's when it's now people take you seriously and then it takes time it takes you time to get away from that because a lot of people haven't like when i'm i'm out here with these like younger folks yeah. like they don't know none of none of this you know and I, and that's that's interesting too yeah, getting yeah. older in the business mm-hmm. and people not like and just getting old is a trip <laughs> yeah. like because i'll be in the club you know what i'm saying spending <laughs> records or whatever like, and, and i'm talking to some girls like you know that i said how old are you 21 and my friend is 22 and she's 23 oh my god she's so old she's 26 <laughs> and I'm like, shit, fuck. I t- when I tell them how old I am, you would have thought I told them I had cancer. <laughs> I said, well, how old are you? I said, well, 47. Oh, my God. How long have you had that? I was like, can't you get, let's get some pink ribbons and he's going to oh die soon. Gosh. I'm moving away from so, that. So, no, but it's true. So, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's true. So it's like, you know, the music now can be can be embraced because a lot of people didn't, a lot of people that are getting the music now didn't see those shows. Yeah. So which talent discovery came first? Finding out you're funny or finding out you could sing? I think finding out you're funny comes early because you're dealing with, like, you know, social things. Like, you know, maybe it's a bully on the street. You know, you got to joke that out. I don't want to have to throw hands with this big nigga. So I got <laughs> so to get that off, get the jokes. But I think I think the funny, it just comes, you're blessed with funny. You've seen people. You've seen Eddie Murphy. You've seen Kevin Hart. You've seen Krista. You're just blessed with that part. Right. So when I was in the third grade, my um, my teacher would let me like have Fridays to tell jokes, you know, to the kids. And at that time, Johnny Carson was the show, so I would take jokes from the Johnny Carson show and tell them to the kids because they, you know, my grandmother would let me watch Johnny Carson and mm-hmm. stuff. So, you know, watching like uh, Steve Allen and and uh, David Brenner and oh, yeah. Dave and and the young David Letterman doing uh-huh. a guest spot on on Johnny Carson, watching a young Richard Pryor and stuff. So that's how the jokes sort of formulated. But it wasn't until like jokes was cool, yeah. you know. Like, like, but women would laugh, and that you get girls with jokes and saying, but when you sing, it's completely mm. different. Like, like I would tell people, I said, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I'm telling jokes, I'm Eric Bishop, but when I sing, I'm Denzel. It's mm. like women just, <laughs> you know, it's completely the different. Reaction, yeah, right. different reactions. So when I got in that, Lionel Richie was hot at the time. Yeah. So I grew my curl out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And so I was, you know, I was singing all the Lionel Richie songs when I got in like the eighth grade. So that's that's when that started. Oscar, Grammy. Yeah. Two different awards, two different fields. Which, was one more gratifying for you? I, I think the Oscar for what that did for all of all of us, like yeah. the Ray Charles thing, it was just an amazing moment. And like we experienced that moment like nobody else because I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. So at the time I was partying so much and getting into a lot of trouble before the Oscars was coming up and I got a call from somebody named Oprah Winfrey. Mm. Hi, Jamie Foxx, it's Oprah Winfrey. And I ended up having to go meet with her and says, Jamie, you got a real opportunity to win this, but you got to slow down. Because I, it was a, I didn't know it was a campaign. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I, she ended up taking me to a party 
And at the party, it was at Quincy Jones's house. Mm-hmm. And Quincy comes up, hey, man, shit, man, you're doing a great job, man, at Ray Charles, man. You killed that son of a bitch, man. It's amazing, man. <laughs> oh my man, God. yeah, come on in, man. I see the records on the wall. And, mm-hmm. 54 million, man. Michael Jackson, man. It was amazing, man. You got a chance, man, to make history, man. Man, let's <laughs> not, not fuck it up, man. Come on, man. Shit. <laughs> so he introduces me to all of these older black actors and actresses from, like, the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. They were there. Like, wow. some of them looked like they had just got that suit for that night <laughs> no but you know what i mean like yeah. they haven't right. been around and, and they were just i was like oh i remember you i remember and they were like we counting on you and mm. then oprah says okay jamie you want to meet the person that's uh, here to actually like knight you mm. he's right over there and it was sydney portier wow. wow and so they walked me over to city portier and he says i saw you one time <laughs> you were at a party do you remember that and i was like man yes and, he, and i said what should i do he says i give you one thing i give you responsibility Mm. And I said, what does that mean? He says, you, you're responsible for your art. You're responsible for your movies and all that. Just do the right thing. So when we won that, it was a completely different, yeah. you know, mm. f- feeling. Yeah, like yeah. everybody, like, you know, we, we. I didn't even go to the Vanity Fair party. Yeah. Like I, I went to, like my boy threw a party so all of the homies and everybody that could get. So we, we went there. When I walked in, it was, you know, niggas smoking weed. We were yeah, yeah. partying, whatever. Mm-hmm. They took the trophy out of my hand. People mm-hmm. was taking pictures with it and shit. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, that was like the biggest like moment Grammy is grat- more gratifying on the music tip yeah. because I've always wanted to do music so when you talk about a Grammy that to me that's that's personally like all I've ever wanted to do but mm. you know both of them have their, uh, their ups um, Monique won her Oscar and, yeah. and since it's hey, ba- a- hey baby let me tell you something okay <laughs> okay sisters hey sisters <laughs> Both you comedians come yes. from the, you know, and yes. she, she, she's had, you know, she's had turbulence. Yeah, because I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, fuck that shit, okay? <laughs> They're not going to make me do this bullshit Hollywood dance. I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to do it. No. Uh, uh, it, 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 the, winning the Oscar is a trip. Yeah. Mm. Because when you win an Oscar, it throws you too far up. Mm-hmm. I don't keep the Oscar in my house. Yeah. I let somebody else hold it. Mm-hmm. Because... Sometimes when people win Oscars, they start speaking like English accents and shit. <laughs> yeah. How you feel? Well, you know, after the Oscar, I was more. So I don't want to have that. What what Monique went through was something that you can't explain. It's like it's so big, and that moment is so big, yeah. and there's no one there to tell you, like it's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. whatever move you make, because if you think about Hollywood. Everybody in their mama goes to try to win the Oscar. I didn't know that. Yeah. But when I said one day, I was all, I was a singer. I really wasn't into this, this Oscar thing. My publicist says, you can't do that. Because there's people like Martin Scorsese that have never won. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So Mon- Monique, and just like me, not yeah. re- maybe not recognizing what it really is. Yeah. And so when you say the turbulence afterwards, it's no difference than anybody who's ever won Best Supporting Actor, and you could check the check the history, mm-hmm. it's always a dark time after that because where do you get that performance monetarily? I mean, it's like, you know, that's a performance that's, that's critically acclaimed, but it's not really a monetary thing, so it's not really the type of movie that everybody's going to see in the masses. And then there is a dance that you have to do, yeah. you know, and I had to do it. And there, was, and there was a couple of times where I blew up, like, yo, you know, but I had people around me say, yo, you got it. It's another day coming. So Monique is talented. That's the one thing, though. Yeah. Monique mm-hmm. is a very talented mm-hmm. person, very mm-hmm. talented uh, actress. She killed that role. She's a very talented comedian. So one thing about real talented people, they will always work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that now we live in a society where everything is blown up so large, you just got to sort of how to know how to, like, make my step or not say anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know, like, you know, you know what her deal is but I just know that anything that she does I'm gonna go see I'm gonna support it no matter what she got the new movie Blackbird coming on Friday Justin Walker future star Uh, Jamie man thank you for coming back thank you man man, I'll come back man we got time to hang out and then we get get do a little longer hey don't forget um, the new album Hollywood is out May 18th yep yeah. And uh, You Changed Me is a big record for you. Thanks, Once man. again, I can't wait to see you live in concert. Uh, thanks for coming through, bro. Thanks, man. Follow me on my uh, pimp, uh, Instagram. Uh, Instagram. <laughs> Pimpstagram. Uh, Instagram. Uh, I am Jamie Foxx, and I'll be like doing like little snippets and letting you know when the album is coming. You'll be seeing folks like yourself on there. Thanks, man. That's what's it. up. Jamie Foxx. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45.